Now, Anton Fedyashin is a professor at the Department of History at the American University. He joins me now live from Washington. Thanks very much, Professor, for joining us here on TRT World. Now, Gorbachev was someone who ended the Cold War without any bloodshed. He was someone who forged uh, arms reduction deals with the United States, partnerships uh, with the West. So in many ways, he was someone uh, who would be an ideal person to be in power in the Soviet Union for the West, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was one of those rare historical figures that seemed to prove uh, the theory of the one man, uh, the great leader, um, uh, to be true. Um, he really single-handedly redirected the course of history, and he was lucky enough that Reagan was in the White House, and Thatcher was at 10 Downing Street, and they managed to find a common language, which is certainly more than you can say about the uh, current political uh, leaders. And they managed to do this while disagreeing profoundly about quite important existential uh, issues, such as communism and capitalism. So, yes, um, uh, Gorbachev's vision for a new world order which was uh, essentially to be pluralistic and inclusive, um, never really materialized after the Soviet Union disappeared. As a matter of fact, I would suggest that what really disappeared, what suffered when the Soviet Union uh, collapsed was uh, Gorbachev's vision. Right, and uh, Professor, uh, certainly right now we are witnessing a war between Russia and Ukraine, and some would argue that what we are witnessing right now has uh, actually, in fact, a lot of it has to do with the breakup of the Soviet Union when Gorbachev wa was in power. What, what, what's your navigation through this? Well, absolutely. Um, listen, uh, what we're seeing now is the continuation uh, of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, but this was less Gorbachev's uh, responsibility than it was uh, Yeltsin's. Um, it was Boris Yeltsin, the future leader of the post-Soviet democratic Russia, who in his rush to remove Gorbachev from power and essentially take his seat in the Kremlin, as the, the boss in Moscow, um, rushed to dissolve the Soviet Union and simply neglected to settle the very important territorial and ethno-territorial uh, questions that have been, uh, you know, uh, building up uh, in combination with NATO expansion into the debacle that we see today. So Gorbachev certainly made tactical mistakes, as your, uh, um, your uh, reporter mentioned earlier. Uh, but it was uh, the post-Gorbachev leader's responsibility to settle those questions in a timely manner. Right, Professor. And while he is someone who is widely praised by the West for his role in ending the Cold War, he remains a divisive uh, figure within Russia. So tell me, what do you think would be his lasting legacy? Well, I think the lasting legacy will be as the, the, the leader of the Soviet Union uh, and a, the leader of a country that was respected and whose interests were always taken into account. Uh, which you can't say about the post-Soviet uh, Russia until, of course, we get to um, uh, Vladimir Putin. And that's how many Russians see it. It's very interesting to reflect on the fact that both Ronald Reagan and then uh, his successor, George H.W. Uh, Bush, were uh, profound opponents of communism. But while battling communism uh, with all of the resources that they had, they never condescended to the Soviet Union the way that the West will begin to condescend to Russia after the demise of the Soviet Union. And so uh, Gorbachev will go down as uh, the last major leader. A lot of Russians blame him for the demise of the Soviet Union, but a lot of Russians also blame him for mismanaging the domestic reforms and especially plunging the Soviet Union into poverty. It was certainly not his intention, but it was an unfortunate outcome of his reforms. But overall, I would say that they were very positive. Anton Fedyashin, thanks very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time.